So, Pat, are you th- are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Robert. So, t- tell us a little bit about this fellow. What's his name exactly? <clears throat> his name is Jasper Lawrence. He actually grew up in England. He grew up in this little farm in the southwest corner of England. And it's important to know, I think, before hearing any part of his story, that Jasper has had allergies for pretty much his whole life. On really bad days, my eyes would swell up so much from pollen or airborne allergens that they would feel like they were swelling shut. I could feel my eyes squeaking in my sockets. It was an enormously uncomfortable feeling. But it was nothing debilitating. They were just allergies. So, you know, he just, like like most other people have allergies, just learned to deal with it. You know, you live with it. But what changed for me in my late 20s, early 30s was my asthma. And at that time, I was living in Santa Cruz. I was relatively recently married. We had three cats um, that had been grandfathered in with the relationship. And I started a landscaping business. I really didn't want to work for someone else. I think someone with allergies starting a landscaping business, that seems kind of unexpected. (laughs) Stupid is actually the word for it. (laughs) And uh, within six months or a year, he starts to notice this really weird barking cough. Was there anything particular that brought this on? Like No, it was, it was just sitting and breathing. Okay. Um, cats certainly didn't help. Right. And uh, during that period, my asthma got much worse very, very quickly. By the time it was 1996, 1997, I was seeing specialists having skin allergen tests and cycling through emergency inhalers, trying Singular and all these other drugs that were coming on the market. I was being hospitalized uh, at least a couple of times a year. I mean, I I looked terrible. I had dark eyes and pale, waxy skin. I had that allergic look. It was a really bad time. And he decides in the summer of 2004 to take a vacation. You made this visit to, to England. Yeah. I took my two daughters back to see my aunt, who had raised me. Very early in the visit, I was sitting at her kitchen table, and she asked me if I'd seen a BBC documentary about parasites and their connection with things like asthma and allergies, multiple sclerosis. And of course I hadn't, but I went upstairs and got on the internet after lunch, and I stayed on the internet until perhaps two in the morning. I didn't stop. And he's reading and reading and the work of all these researchers. One study after the next. uh, Japan, epidemiological studies in Africa, animal models of multiple sclerosis. This enormous weight of evidence that in the developing world, people don't really have asthma or allergies. And what he discovers is that behind all of this, to his shock, is hookworms. Hookworm? Yeah, hookworms. Yeah, I learned that a- asthma was 50% less likely in someone who had a hookworm infection. So this sort of just, like, hits you. Oh, yeah. What did you think when you when you read that? Oh, I immediately was determined to, to obtain a hookworm. Immediately. Hookworm. I couldn't wait. Hookworm. So hookworms, hookworms are these very tiny worms the size of a little hair. But if you take a microscope and you zoom way in... <laughs> have this big circular mouth brimming full of pointy teeth. Very scary to look at. They have these toothy mouths so that they can burrow up through your feet, ride through your blood, and eventually end up down in your gut and start chewing on the inside of your intestines. This guy wants hookworms in his intestines? Absolutely. And so you just Google it? Yeah, hook, hookworms for sale. I mean, you know, someone's got to be selling them. But, uh... Not nothing. I contacted every laboratory supply company in the world and parasitology research centers, and they all said the same thing. No. Various flavors of no. And so I came to the conclusion that I was going to have to go to the tropics. So, fast forward a little. Jasper is in Cameroon along the coast. Quite literally and figuratively the armpit of Africa. He's 200 miles north of the equator. It's extremely hot. He finds a guy to drive him around. And so he and his driver would go to a village. He'd get out of the car. Walk up to these villagers and ask them if they could see the latrine. Just an open area of ground, usually with bushes so people can have a little bit of privacy. And I would go over to the area, remove my shoes, and start walking. The first time I did that, I, uh, I almost couldn't do it. It, was, it must have been 110 degrees that day. 100% humidity, and the stench 
and the noise from the insects. It was so repulsive and so disgusting. How many villages of the trains do you think you visited? Um, between 30 and 40. Jasper spent two weeks there walking around in village latrines, and then he flew home. Hmm. Yeah, I got back from Africa in early February, so I was looking at allergy season coming up. And the day I realized that I no longer had allergies, it was such a good day. I got into my car, and I started driving, and I had the window down. You know, I felt the breeze blowing across my face. In the past, what that meant was that very quickly, my eyes would be itching uncontrollably. Snot and phlegm was going to be pouring out of every orifice in my face. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I just started screaming in the car. I was so, so happy. And I haven't had an asthma attack since I went to Africa. I no longer have allergies. Um, the vast majority of the benefit that I, I've experienced has come from hookworm. What, what is the hookworm doing? Do you know? Well, so the immune system that we learn about in elementary school is all about like these attack cells that go after foreign invaders and destroy them. Right. And that's a big, important part of the immune system. But if the immune system were allowed to attack and destroy things unchecked, it could kill you. And there are lots of diseases where the primary symptoms are caused by the immune system attacking the body that it's really designed to protect. Allergies and asthma are just two of these. Some of the more serious ones are like type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, in which the immune system actually starts attacking the inside of the intestines. Mm. There are like 80 of these diseases. 80 of them. And so what scientists have found in lots and lots of mouse studies, and in some human studies to this point too, is that once the hookworms get inside the gut and the immune system actually starts attacking, somehow hookworms actually stimulate these cells which just quiet things down and tell the attack cells to stop attacking. So these are like lullaby cells? Exactly. What lots and lots of scientists think, Joel Weinstock, Joel Weinstock Tufts Medical Center, and dozens of others, is that over thousands and thousands of years, hookworms almost developed in tandem with the human immune system. Coevolution parasites living within your body, your immune system changes. So you got to a point where the hookworms could survive safely. The worm gets a home, there's food coming down the food pipe, and in return, the human immune system gains some kind of, some form of positive regulatory advantage. So that if you had this glitch where your immune system started attacking your own body, the presence of the hookworms would keep things controlled. That's the gift. You do something for the worm, the worm does something for you. So then, by that logic, what we in the West, in the richer countries, have done stupidly is we have cleaned ourselves up too much and we don't have enough wormies in us. Yeah, this is called... They call it the hygiene hypothesis. The hygiene hypothesis. That we're not dirty enough. Too clean. We function like rainforests, we're ecosystems, and we've entirely eliminated a class of organism that co-evolved with us and our genetic predecessors for millions of years. Now, uh, I don't want to leave the impression that hygiene is bad for you. People can't go back to living in filth, kids playing in sewage by the riverbank, but in improving our hygiene, we are also excluding organisms that may be important for making us well. So then what does Jasper do about all this? He decides to start a business selling hookworm to people. What? You can call him up, and he will literally FedEx a dose of hookworms to your door. How? Wait. Sorry, breaking for a second. Pat. Hi, Jad. Where does he get the hookworm from? This is weird. <laughs> Jasper gets the hookworm from himself. Could you describe how you go about getting hookworm from uh, your stool into uh, one of your patients? Well, it's a very easy organism to work with. It it just it gets up and it walks out of it. 
So it doesn't take an enormous amount of work to separate it from the feces. And then having done that, I repeatedly wash them in solutions of antibiotics to make sure that anything that could live on them is killed. People contact us, we'll have them complete a questionnaire, submit a recent blood test, then we'll ship them a dose and all the materials and equipment and the instructions necessary to infect themselves. Joyce, says, is this a safe thing to do? To Jasper, Jasper has done tons and tons of research, but he's not a doctor. Right. The treatment is not approved by... The FDA. In That's the what I wonder. Is there any serious sort of double-blind study trying to figure out whether some safe delivery of hookworm might make sense? Yeah. So, so one of one of the guys who was sort of a pioneer in this hookworm research is David Pritchard. Um, I'm Professor David Pritchard, immunologist and parasitologist at the University of Nottingham, where I study parasites and the wound healing properties of maggots. So we've now got two safety trials under our belts but we've yet to conduct the trials to show that therapeutic benefit results from infection with worms. So Pritchard infected himself pretty much just to make sure that it was safe. What we did was 10 of us in the lab took worms at different doses. We were either given 10, 25, 50 or 100 worms, and then we had to report on the symptoms. And on the back of that study, we determined that 10 worms were tolerated. But Pritchard, when he did this proof of safety study actually gave himself 50 hookworms. Oh. Which put him out of commission for a while. Well, I, I felt pretty bad. I mean, pain in the gut, really. You know, you could feel them because they are biting on your tissues. I mean, if you have too many hookworms, they can cause things like diarrhea and the most serious side effect and the side effect that makes them uh, sort of a public health enemy is that they can give you anemia. So if you have too many, you, you lose quite a bit of blood to these parasites. Well, you know, if you take too many hookworm, which you're not going to if you come to us, the worst thing you're going to get is anemia. But it's not like you wake up one morning and you're drained of blood. It's very slow to develop and it's very easy to deal with. Jasper's kind of just gone for it. You know, it's a very sort of like um, cowboy move. To the scientific community, I think they believe that I'm premature. It's not FDA approved. In offering this to the public. You don't know what it is. You don't know its purity. Uh, it's not safe. But I've talked to several clients who had really severe allergies and asthma. They say they've, they've just achieved these great results. And Jasper also says he's seen success with, uh, with a few multiple sclerosis patients and several Crohn's disease patients too. Like how many people do you think that you have infected? It's about 85 right now. How is business? Business is, everything is, that... business is is adequate, but I, I, I honestly don't know why I don't wake up in the morning with my front garden 20 deep with people with ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, allergies. I just don't know why I'm not completely buried. The way he sees it, people are scared. Well, they're the people who are coming from a point of view of what they learned in kindergarten about clean drinking water and sewers. To them, worms and parasites are so repulsive that there's nothing good to be said about them. But I can make you better. It's simple, it's cheap. I mean, for God's sake, these organisms fall out my rear end every day, a half a million at a time. The raw material is human excrement, for God's sake. All people have to do is open their minds. Are you really that scared of a little worm? Thanks to Patrick Walters and the hosts of Radiolab, Jad Abumrad and Robert Krowich for that story. 